Welcome back guys. Now let's discuss about growth hormone. First of all, growth hormone, is it a catabolic hormone or anabolic hormone? It's a anabolic hormone. Okay, why it is called as anabolic hormone? We'll discuss in a minute. Why? Because it causes proteogenesis. It increases the growth of the body. So it's an anabolic hormone, not a catabolic hormone. But we'll discuss in detail in a minute. Now, what are the conditions in which growth hormone levels are elevated? Remember, it's something like this. Growth hormone, the one of the most important function of growth hormone is to increase the blood glucose levels. So any condition which is associated with less glucose levels, in those conditions, growth hormone levels will be increased. Again, I'm repeating guys, one of the most important function of growth hormone is to increase the glucose levels. So remember, growth hormone for glucose. So any condition where the blood glucose levels are going down or in those conditions where we require more glucose levels in the blood. So in all those conditions, growth hormone production is going to be increased. Okay, now let's see one by one. So growth hormone production is increased during fasting. Okay, so growth hormone is going to be seen more during fasting states. We all know during fasting state, our blood glucose levels are falling down. At that time, we need the glucose. So growth hormone will come. It will act on the liver, increases the blood glucose levels. How it will do, we will discuss in a minute. But during fasting states, growth hormone levels are increased. In the same way, during exercise and trauma, in both these conditions, we need glucose. Okay, during exercise, for activity of the body, we need glucose and during trauma states also. So for healing the body or like, you know, emotional trauma, psychological trauma, whatever. Now, during trauma states also, we need glucose to take a proper decision for the good, uh, the good body healing. For everything, we need glucose. So growth hormone levels increases the glucose levels. Okay, now, ghrelin increases the growth hormone production. First of all, when you will see ghrelin, so ghrelin increases the hunger. So in the fasting states, ghrelin will be there. Now this ghrelin increases the hunger. That's what we have already discussed in uh, GIT. Now ghrelin, see, it will act on central nervous system. Now this ghrelin helps in the production of growth hormone. So ghrelin increases the blood glucose levels. True. Okay. Now glucagon. So the name itself is there. Glucose is gone. Whenever the blood glucose levels are going down, glucagon from the alpha cells of uh, islets of pancreas is going to produce the glucagon. And this glucagon will increase the blood glucose levels. Okay. Now, blood glucose levels by blood glucose levels also, this glucagon will increase the growth hormone levels. Okay. So, glucagon increases the growth hormone. Growth hormone increases the blood glucose levels. Now, and amino acids like arginine, and also see during sleep there are different phases of sleep first nrem will be there rem will be there in nrem there is nrem stage 1 nrem stage 2 nrem stage 3 and nrem stage 4 nrem stage 3 and 4 are the deep sleeps so especially when you are deep sleeping in nrem stage 3 and 4 so during these phases growth hormone is going to be released helps in the growth of the body okay and uh, steroids like Testosterone and estrogen. Remember it's something like this. Testosterone and estrogen are the sexual hormones for the activity of the sex. You need to have glucose simple. Try to remember something like this. Okay. So testosterone and estrogen are the hormones which are associated with increasing in the growth hormone levels. Now just like that, what are the conditions in which growth hormone levels are decreased? Growth hormone levels are decreased by somatostatin. Somatostatin is coming from the hypothalamus which is also called as growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So universally somatostatin decreases everything. It decreases the growth hormone, decreases the glucagon, decreases insulin, it decreases the gastric acid production everywhere. Wherever you see the word somatostatin, it decreases everything universally. Okay. So somatostatin decreases the growth hormone levels. Just like that. See, in sleep, I have taught you there are two stages of sleep NREM and REM in NREM 3 and 4 growth hormone levels are going to be increased just same like that in REM sleep there is a rapid eye movement sleep in REM sleep growth hormone levels are going to be decreased but in REM sleep prolactin will be increased that we will discuss later okay but anyway during REM sleep growth hormone levels are decreased and somatomedian C so what exactly is the somatomedian C I will tell you growth hormone it will go to the liver where it's getting converted into somatomedian C now the somatomedian C will give negative feedback for the release of growth hormone okay so somatomedian C will decrease the growth hormone levels as well as cortisol will decrease the growth hormone levels
ओके गाइस नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस व्हाट इज द व्हाट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ द ग्रोथ हार्मोन सी आई एम शोइंग यू दिस इज द पिटरी ग्लैंड फ्रॉम द पिटरी ग्लैंड ग्रोथ हार्मोन इज बीइंग रिलीज्ड नाउ प्लीज कंसंट्रेट दिस ग्रोथ हार्मोन इट विल डायरेक्टली एक्ट ऑन द एडिपोस टिश्यू राइट नाउ दिस इज द डायरेक्ट पाथवे ग्रोथ हार्मोन इट कैन डायरेक्टली एक्ट ऑन द एडिपोस टिश्यू कॉजेस द लिपोलाइसिस मींस द ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ द फैट्स ओके सो ग्रोथ हार्मोन breaks down the fats that is the lipolysis now when the growth hormone is acting on the muscle what will happen more proteogenesis more protein synthesis is happening so right now if i take a shot of growth hormone my muscle mass is going to be increased the extra fats in my body is going to be decreased so that i am going to have a very lean mass that v shaped body okay so i will become muscular i am going to become fit in like you know fit in size so extra fats will be broken down that's a increases the adipo uh, uh, lipolysis is going to happen and the muscle mass is going to be increased and the growth hormone can directly act on the bone increases the length of the bone by acting on the epiphyseal regions okay in children epiphyseal regions are not closed epiphyseal regions are still growing so in children growth hormone acts on the epiphyseal region increases the length of the bone increases the height of the bone so the person will grow so these are the direct actions so tell me growth hormone action on proteins is synthesis protein synthesis growth hormone direct action on lip, uh, adipocytes is lipolysis growth hormone acts on the bone helps in increasing the length of the bones that's a bone growth but these growth hormones can also go to the liver see growth hormone receptors are present on the liver now whenever growth hormone is acting on the liver what will happen see guys i have taught you growth hormone increases the blood glucose levels how that happens is whenever growth hormone is acting on the liver we know our livers are the stores of glycogen glycogen is nothing but a store of glucose so whenever glu uh, whenever growth hormone is acting on the liver what will happen glycogenolysis is going to happen glycogen is going to undergo lysis glycogenolysis which releases the glucose so blood levels of glucose increases so simply tell me how growth hormone is going to increase the blood glucose levels by acting on the liver causes glycogenolysis now tell me for example if there is so much amount of growth hormone in my body because of some tumor in my anterior pituitary gland there is so much amount of growth hormone now what will happen that so much amount of growth hormone will act on the liver causes more increase in the blood glucose levels whenever there is more glucose that will cause diabetes or not yes so growth hormone is a diabetogenic hormone it's a true statement growth hormone increases the blood glucose levels makes the person uh, uh, takes a person uh, makes a person susceptible to diabetes mellitus now let's talk about one more important point these growth hormones they will go to the liver where they are converted into compounds like somatomedian c so growth hormone entering into the liver where they are converted into somatomedian c or insulin like growth factor they are one and the same so somatomedian c and insulin like growth factor what are their functions now same this somatomedian c will also go to the bone increases the bone length increases the bone length makes a person to grow in height so this is the direct action right now what like you know what i have taught this one like you know via somatomedian c this is a indirect action previously whatever i have taught that growth hormone can directly act on the bone increases the height of the bone that's a direct action so growth is happening via direct action as well as indirect action but when you see somatomedian c somatomedian c is something anti lipolysis okay normal growth hormone when it acts on adipocyte it will cause lipolysis but a somatomedian c it is anti lipolysis and it's having actions like insulin and this somatomedian c also will cause the protein synthesis so direct action indirect action on proteins is same protein synthesis but where comes the difference is with the lipids direct action of the growth hormone on the adipocytes is lipolysis but when the growth hormone is getting converted into somatomedian c then this somatomedian is anti lipolytic okay just remember that one point so what i'm trying to say what I, what is the concept i want you to know here is bone growth is happening via two routes one is the direct route one is the direct route other is the indirect route now for example imagine a condition where the growth hormone receptors are not functional they got mutated now can the growth hormone act on the liver no it cannot act on the liver so can somatomedian c production will be there no somatomedian c production cannot be there if there is no somatomedian c or insulin like growth factor can it cause the bone growth no bone growth is not going to happen so that will cause dwarfism so dwarfism can happen even if there is growth hormone normally usually uh, students will think sir uh, dwarfism is because of the deficiency of growth hormone it's not only just because of the deficiency of growth hormone even if growth hormone is there even high amounts of growth hormone is there but it's not getting converted into somatomedian c in liver because of the growth hormone receptor mutation then somatomedian c is not there insulin like growth factor is not there so bone growth cannot happen so that kind of dwarfism is called as laurent dwarfism okay so in laurent dwarfism what is the 
problem the problem lies at the level of growth hormone receptors growth hormone receptor mutation where the growth hormone is there but somatomediancy is not there leading to dwarfism now please answer this question guys growth hormone helps in bone growth via both direct direct and indirect actions okay both direct as well as indirect actions direct action is growth hormone acting on the bone indirect action is growth hormone getting converted to somatomediancy and acting on the bone okay now let's see what are the abnormalities of the growth hormone see there are conditions where you can have more growth hormone because of a pituitary adenoma a pituitary adenoma to somatotropes okay somatotropic tumor is there that micro adenoma is there so somatotropes are forming a tumor and producing functional like you know they are uh, they are functional tumors they are producing more and more amount of growth hormone whenever there is more growth hormone in children that will cause a condition called as gigantism so the child will be like you know zygant okay he is going to be uh, 8 foot or 9 foot okay so, like you know he is going to be very much tall why because growth hormone is acting on the epiphyseal plates of the uh, ch uh, children so children's epiphyseal plates are not closed they are still functioning so they will increase in the height so so such children are called as zygants okay giants are gigantism now if the growth hormone is increasing in adults means what will happen it will, uh, the person will end up with a condition called as acromegaly so what is this acromegaly the adult he cannot grow in height why because his epiphyseal plates are closed growth hormone cannot increase the height of this person but growth hormone can increase the size of the organs also so when growth hormone if it's acting on his bodily tissues his viscera the viscera will increase in his uh, increase in the size the size of the the size of the uh, hands the size of the feet the size of the jaw the size of the eyes everything is going to be increased okay so what happens if growth hormone levels are elevated in adults that will end up with a, the person will end up with a condition called as acromegaly even here you can see okay the, there is frontal bossing there is increase in the size of this uh, uh, frontal area so frontal boss, bossing is seen he is having big nose and especially the the jaw is increased in size and it's protruding anteriorly this is prognathism prognathism uh, his tongue is going to be large big beefy tongue which is even coming out of the mouth all the time so large fleshy tongue is seen large nose large hands and feet prognathism with frontal bossing all these are the clinical features of acromegaly why acromegaly increased growth hormone in adults in children it will cause gigantism now whenever there is a deficiency of growth hormone in children the person cannot grow in height that will cause dwarfism but important point is dwarfism is not only because of decreased growth hormone there is a special type of dwarfism called as Laurent dwarfism in Laurent dwarfism what is the defect guys the defect is in the growth hormone receptors growth hormone is there increased growth hormone but Somatomedian C or the insulin like growth factors are deficient. So, indirect way uh, for the bone growth is not happening. So, the person is a dwarf. This is lower end dwarfism. Okay, guys, I have discussed all the important points which you need for your exam. See you with the next video. Thank you.